Hi everybody, welcome to episode 6 of the Like, Click and Share podcast. I'm Darren Winter and with me today are Gemma Walton and Emma Kraus. Hello! Hi <laughs> Hello! And we sound happier than the pre-record because uh, on the pre-record uh, we've tried this now I think for the third time. Um, we're an hour in, we're on a second platform of choice. And uh, we're just full of technical problems today. So uh, this is just an audio-only podcast um, because uh, Restream is clearly having some problems today where it just booted us out and couldn't do video or audio. We'll come over to Zencaster. Uh, so Zencaster I've used before, uh, but we're having some problems there with video. So it might be, um, I don't know, we're just having some sort of bad day for the internet, I think, because usually it's absolutely fine. Um, so we just relegated ourselves to audio only um so but um yeah so this is a uh, um this is how to overcome a challenge you keep sort of going and mm-hmm. see what you can try and muster up for the, for the very best of what you've got um i'm gonna hand over to Gemma, who's going to do a quick bit of introduction um and then emma's going to kind of tell you all the details about um who we are and um where you can find us so over to you Gem. Okay, if I'd known it was going to be audio only, I wouldn't have done my hair. I didn't have to put my baby on. <laughs> right, so if it's, if it's the first time listening, I'm Gemma and we all work in marketing and communications, whether as business owners or freelancers, and we're here to talk you through the latest big topics in marketing and how you can grow your business, whether you're a freelancer, business owner, or just interested in how marketing can help you. Great stuff. And I'm Emma, and I'm here just to say a big thank you to listen for listening to us, and that we always hope that you find our podcast helpful and interesting. And we'd love to hear from you. Any comments, any questions, you can email me at emma at jucodigital.com or you can find us on social media, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube. Um, just search for Duco Digital. All the links are in the show notes. And please don't forget to hit subscribe so you automatically receive each episode and never miss us. Fabulous stuff. Thank you very much. Um, so the topic today um, is email marketing. Um, so there were reports not that long ago that email marketing was on its way out. Um, but there's been a massive resurgence. And there are a few people say like it's never going to go away. Um, and in fact, it's probably um, one of the, the pillars um, of or one of the key t- to being a successful digital marketer. And um, apparently the first email was sent in 1971. And today over 220 billion emails are sent and received daily. So there's definitely no sign of this going away. But nearly 45 percent of those are spam. Um, and I think we're going to be talking about some of these issues today. So particularly about email delivery. Um, how you can improve on delivery and just to kind of understand how you can use email marketing more successfully. So do listen through the podcast because there's there's some real sort of key nuggets of information um, that hopefully that'd be great takeaways. Um, But Emma's going to kick off with with a bit of an introduction of the benefits of email marketing. So uh, over to you, Emma. Um, Thanks. So, So I think obviously we're all big um, cheerleaders of social media and and that's where that kind of is our bread and butter and that's what you would be expecting us to talk about but I think recently um, I've been wanting to explore quite a lot how uh, email marketing would be more successful for my own business and and what I can do to um, to shore that up for my business and I think this it's been making me think that everything that I do on social media and everything that I grow on social media is obviously owned by the social media platform. So if Instagram or Facebook were to close tomorrow, where would I be with being able to talk to my customers? And that's um, really made me think about sort of growing my email list and and the, the way that I can talk to my customers that way. Because at the end of the day, I own my email list and I own that communication with my customers. And so um, that's quite important. Um, So that was the number one reason why I wanted to work hard on it. And also to be really efficient with my business and look at the different touch points that customers talk to me and and the way that they find me in the kind of way that sort of social media is such a it's kind of like a circus ring, isn't it? It's so busy. It's so scrolly. It's really difficult. And and I really understand my place there and my 
um, my my role in that social media, but an email communication with a customer lets us kind of really get down to it. It lets me talk about my expertise in my field. It lets them sort of really see what I'm about and what we're doing. And of course, they they can unsubscribe at any time. So you know that anybody who opens your email is already really invested in what you've got to say and really there for what you've got to say. So um, I don't know what you guys think, but that's where I, I have, as a small business owner, been really starting to kind of improve my email marketing and really get to grips to it because I think it's a real power force for my business. That's so what, why, why did you stop? Did you ever start with email marketing to begin with or did you, did you kind of start it and then drop it? How did it, how does that journey work for you? Um, so when I set up my website about three years ago, I've got some, a few standard emails that go out kind of um, that are automated through my Squarespace uh, website, but they're, they're not anything that I've really spent a lot of time considering. I haven't spent a lot of time considering the message, how well they're written, are they consistently written? And there were definitely lots of points that I'm, I'm not sending um, an email. So I noticed from feedback from customers that I often get an email saying, did you get my payment? Did you get my payment? And then I've realized then that means that all, there's not automatically an email going through my website to say, thanks for your payment. Your order will be processed and you'll receive it then. So that was an easy way by paying attention to kind of feedback that was coming in. I can write a really good clear automated email that reassures the customer at that point. I think your emails uh, automated or not, and some of them can be done for you. So that really cuts out a lot of your work. And some of them you want to tailor and some of them need to be uh, timely and, and personalized. So there's different things, but um, it, it gives you a good opportunity to really build that relationship, to show trust, to show reliability of your brand. And, and, and a lot of that can be happening for a small business like mine without you having to do all the work all the time. Yeah, yeah. Gemma, Gemma, do you work a lot with email at the moment in terms of email marketing? No, not at the moment. Um, I have done in the past. Um, I think it's it's tricky. It's been quite difficult to, I guess, get it right. And what you were saying before about um, there being a real shift. I remember being on a Google digital marketing course about six years ago. Um, and we covered some email marketing back then. And I know I remember being shocked at the time because everyone had always made such a big deal about email marketing and how important it was. And they were actually saying that um, a lot of universities weren't giving out email addresses now to students because they were almost like obsolete. People didn't use email every morning wow. anymore. And it was all moving towards like instant messaging and social media and having that more joined up approach. You know, it was when people were starting to be able to log into websites and different things, but using like your, your Google password and log in for everything, you know, like you can yeah. do with like Canva and other things. And I remember being really shocked at the time thinking, well, how are you going to reach out to your customers if people aren't going to use emails and really wondering how it was going to go. But I think there's been a bit of a shift since then. So I think it's difficult. Um, I think you're going to cover this, aren't you, Darren, about getting it into your getting getting your email into somebody's inbox. Yeah, I'm going to have. I'm going to. I'm going to. Um, interesting. This is a really good podcast because uh, we've kind of got different aspects of what we're going to be talking about here. So Emma just covered a little bit about about, about benefits, but she just recently recently completed some training. Uh, about how she could use it on her website. I don't want to say anything more because she's going to talk about that next. But yeah, I'm going to look at um, improving sort of the delivery, um, which is often a problem uh, where you want to send an email out to, to a group of people or your whole mailing list, and a lot of it just ends up um, in their spam boxes. So how can you avoid that? Um, and then you're going to finally round up, Gemma, aren't you, in terms of um, sort of providing more um, kind of sort of analytics and data side of uh, of email is that right um i'm gonna talk through some trends for 2021 yep. so obviously like what i was saying there about there being like a real shift there has been a real shift in things obviously um pre-covid and now as to the types of emails um and what people are doing so i'm going to talk about that fabulous so then so emma so you you just recently completed some training mm -hmm. um so how did that work for you and how how can you going to use that in your business 
Yeah, so um, I signed up to Helen Perry's List Club. I feel like I talk about her every time, helenperry.com, and I'll put that in the show notes. Um, She did a three-week course, and it was just really about growing your list, growing that ownership of that communication with your customers, all aspects of it, why it's good for your business, why it's good for your customer, how to... uh, the sort of logistics of it and all of those kind of things. But what I took away from it uh, for my business was um, just really being aware that as 2021 goes on, how difficult, if we head into economic difficulties, how difficult sales and purchasing is going to become for everyone. And so how that relationship with your customer is going to be more important than ever. People are going to make purchases of expensive things like mine um, with much more consideration and 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 rightly so and so it's important that that uh, relationship with your customer is solid and strong and that they know they are making that purchase with confidence when I had a look then at my social media so including things like my profile and my messaging that's going out that way and then did an audit on my website of the different points that uh, customers could get in touch with us as a company and, and and ways that they would give us their email and that we could increase that communication and improve that communication so that it was it was a quality relationship it was full of trust and that and that they could see and I at every opportunity could give them the the, the knowledge that I'm an expert in my field and that they're going to get quality design handmade in the UK and all of those kind of things that we are worthy of their custom. When I looked at that, there were eight places, eight touch points that um, really needed improving and really eight places that uh, customers could could have that interaction. And that's significant because we know that people don't just buy, when did you last buy something that's a 400 pound price point? Just go online and buy it. You don't, you have a look, you maybe take a price, you go, look somewhere else you maybe come back you have you know it it takes some time to to build that relationship then when I've looked at those different touch points things like your pop-up that come and asking people to sign up they're making sure that um when they've signed up they you send them a really good welcome email about what they should expect why it's worth their time why they should open your email even and not just let it go into junk forever when to make sure that they're consistent and and this has taken me a couple of days of sitting down hardcore kind of writing editing looking at my vocabulary that I'm using taking out most of all the words um, and and really doing that and and I ended up with over 2,000 words of writing and it made me realize that if I hadn't done this work I, I must be sending those emails but am I right of those four billion emails that you said or whatever gets sent a week? I reckon I'm doing two billion of them, but because I'm <laughs> processing all my work all the time. So having done this piece of work, this audit, I've I hope to make my business not just better for customers, not more accessible, but also more efficient for me as a small business. So I can get on and do the other things that I need to be designing and making and and things that actually people want to engage with my company for. So I'm hoping it is obviously going to improve my sales. That's at the end of the day, I have to pay my rent, my staff, and this is about increasing those sales. But growing those sales through the point of uh, an increased relationship with my customer rather than a race to the bottom of just trying to uh, discount everything and just that that it's it's about definitely improving that relationship with my customer so for me that's what it's about you mentioned the eight touch points have you got the list of the Mm. eight so you can just run through briefly yeah, let me just find them for you. I do have it because I've written them all a lot of times. I can guess probably um, what they might go on, see if you like can. Say. So imagine you could be like the home page. You you said like the pop up. You probably have a newsletter subscribe box. That's yeah. Imagine those so, are three. Um, yeah. So a pop up, a welcome uh, reply email, 
um, a bespoke email and in the about us and the different places as well that people can that I can try and garner somebody's email address is quite important. In our email signatures as well, we've rewritten them and given a link to sign up to our newsletter there. Um, in a thank you for your order email, a thank you for your bespoke order, your order is on its way, <laughs> the abandoned car email, I've redone that, um, a feedback review of uh, email after... Um, after all the process and when they've had their piece, our social bios, we've redone them um, to, to put um, an invitation to sign up to the newsletter, which we're doing like a magazine. Our blog, we've rewritten that and restyled that so that we can ask people to join in and share our stuff and share our emails and also our yeah. newsletter. So uh, is that eight, one, two, three, four, five? Six? Yeah, so there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of work. Yeah sit down and um do that but i i really recommend that so that's eight opportunities that my business may not have what i may have been missing that's eight times with customers that i've really might have been off the mark and not done as well as i have i also think that this is a bit like your business plan it, it might be something that i constantly have to update uh we look at and see how it goes but that's eight touch points with customers that I've hopefully improved. And uh, I really would like to say to anybody else, do it. Like really just spend some time thinking about that. Uh, so when did you, re when did you, have you just completed that recently or was that a few months ago? Um, through June, I did the course through June. I, I really recommend right. any of Helen's courses. Um, it was kind of a four day, four days a week for three weeks. It was I wouldn't, I would say it was an outlay. I wouldn't say it was expensive considering the quality and how much I think I will get back from it. And um, she yeah. uh, did masterclasses. She brought in experts, lots and lots of input every day. Um, yeah, but so so definitely a considerable, but worth it, I think. But it'd be interesting to see now over maybe sort of six months time how your, your contact list might have grown um and then kind of the, the how you might have overcome some of the challenges because obviously the big one we're, we're probably going to talk about today is content um mm -hmm. so that you know the type of content you've got to go in and trying to think of new ideas and to try and keep them engaging because that can be a, a big challenge it's okay oh well, i say it's okay it's still a big thing to even get into where you've got to now but then the next step sort of creating regular content going out is actually uh, a big challenge in itself because if you're doing things like like what we're doing we've got the podcast we might have a blog going out might have some new products um, but you might not have any of that most mm -hmm. people probably don't so in terms of then when you if you're in that situation you've really got to draft a bit of a, a small plan so you don't find yourself too cornered quickly um thinking well actually i've started this but now i've got absolutely nothing really to go out and it's just the same stuff going out all the time um so i do if you do feel like you're in that situation then i think first of all get yourself a little plan and if you've got no ideas whatsoever just start looking out at your competitors start mm -hmm. signing up to their mailing list and you'll see mm -hmm. the types of things that they're doing and a lot of the time um they're not really anything it's, it's not uh so it's not really difficult um, I think what's probably the, the difficult challenge, you talk about maybe the same products, um, but it's just about the look um, and trying to oh. almost sell it visually and the, and like the wording that you talked about, trying to like reduce the, the amount of words uh -huh. um, and just trying to encourage people to go through to the list. I also think the biggest challenge is growing an email list now. Um, I think it's getting, it's very tough to get people to sign up to receive like more email marketing it's like because we receive so much already so you know why why do we continue keep adding our email addresses um so it has to be something you have to be offering something particularly um good or um you, there's a good chance to win something there has to be a real reason why you might want to be sharing your data to receive more more emails um Lots. yeah but there, there, there are lots of benefits that for you as a business to do that. Yes, if you're if you have a business model that means you're going to have um, a high repeat of custom, 
then it's worth offering a big discount on the on the first on the first sale if you think someone's going to buy something off you every three months or or every two years you know there's kind of um a lot of growth from that if it, it's a one-off purchase maybe like uh, I'm looking for a new kitchen again that you like I'm I'm gonna I want to see the, your um your expertise I want to see you you want to sell me that aspirational kitchen by sending me like invested cool kitchens so that I really lust after yeah but I'm only here now it might be I'll have my kitchen thanks and I don't want any more and as, and so just I'm, I'll unsubscribe from you and that's really cool and it's often what we say about social media it is better to have a smaller following of engaged people who are interested who are there for you um, than it is just to have a massive list of people that are just dead because what will happen is they won't open your email it will go into spam and and that's how the algorithms will serve up your emails and they'll go to spam. So it's better almost to cull your email list if you haven't got lots of people opening your email. You don't want that. You want people who are opening it. So it's your real opportunity to uh, engage at a different level, at a deeper level with your your niche audience. It's your real chance to go to go deep, <laughs> to show your expertise and and let your audience know what you are there for, to serve them and to be helpful. And, and I think you've got to be upfront about that in all the places that people would ser- sign up for your email. Why should they? Is it because you're going to get a discount? Is it because they're going to get the best bits of you? Is it because why? Why? And you've got to be really high front loaded about why someone should bother. Because why should you bother? If you think about the, the things you open... There are clothing companies that send me, I reckon, four emails a day. Thanks for coming. Whenever yeah. I've got a half hour on a bus, I will delete all of your crap. I don't want that. And then there's some people who regularly send a, like a blog or a newsletter on a weekend, and I can't wait for it. I love it. And I, I look for, um, for it every time. And if, I, if for some reason I've missed it, I'd go looking for it. And because it adds real value to my life and I you know, I love it. I don't know when I bought a magazine actually last, but um, apart from the big issue, but I just so so it it yeah. You just got to be upfront really early on about why people should bother with your email. That's brilliant. Okay, well, I've got um, some tips here um, that we're going to run through about kind of um, email delivery. Um, so number one, I've got is about authenticating your domain. Um, now I'm going to throw some um, some crazy uh, terminology at you here. So the first one is mm-hmm. um, SPF, which is the Sender Policy Framework, mm-hmm. um, and then also the DKIM, which is the Domain Keys Identified Mail. So basically, what these do, um, they they both have separate jobs, but but together, and um, they just confirm that you're the owner of the domain name from the email address that you're sending. So. Um, if you're the owner of joeblogs.com and you're sending from joe at joeblogs.com, then just double check in that you are Joe and you are you, you do own joeblogs.com. Um, you're given your marketing tool, your email marketing tool, permission to send email messages on your behalf. Now, most of the time, this is all done when you sign up for an email marketing platform, um, certainly nowadays, but maybe going back a few years, um, I think the moment they've got a few platforms, just like you could just sign up and start sending stuff straight out. But I don't think there's many platforms that allow you to do that anymore. Um, so really, this should be already done. Um, there may be the reason this might not uh, be uh, kind of aligned properly, maybe just to do with domain name changes. And so, so it's, but it's worth double checking mm. um, that your DKIM and your SPF is all done and all set up. Mm. Um, they're also there to kind of prevent like spoofing and phishing. Um, and spoofing, if you don't know what that means, that just means that it's about like um, some, uh, somebody else trying to um, pretend um, that they're you. And obviously, we see a lot of those types of emails going out at the moment where you know, it looks like it's from one person. But then if you look at the email address, it's actually from some really random email address. So that's that's what spoofing is. Um, so you could say you're from, let, let's use Joe Blogs. We can't use any companies. They just say uh, you are from, you know, you, you think it's from joeblogs.com. It says it is. But then when you look at the address, it's like info at xyz.com, which obviously is not a real company. Um, so then you therefore shouldn't even do anything with that email. You should just delete it, move it to spammer or report it. Um, and then phishing, 
Um, if you're not too sure what that means, and it's fishing with a pH and not with the mm. F, with a traditional rod and line. Um, so like fishing is where uh, you might click a button um, and then it's trying to capture your your data, your emails, uh, sorry, your yeah, data you're either inputting, um, passwords, um, even things into your banks, stuff like that. Um, it could be download, you might ask you to download software or run a test, anything like that. Um, so those things are obviously really bad. Um, but these, this is why uh, SPF and DKIM is really important. You should, should set up, um, and also kind of not to do with email delivery, but um, just to do with security here because we're co- talking more about that. Then do change your passwords. It is a pain changing your passwords, um, but please do think about changing your passwords. The reason being is that I had a interesting um, example. It's from um, an accountant. Um, that we used fairly recently um, and we started getting emails from them it sounded like it was a real person and i responded and this person did respond so mm-hmm. i actually rang them to double check and they said no it isn't that person that person is not here doing that so mm-hmm. somebody got in and was interpreting or was pretending to be them nice. so which is it sounds awful but if you think if you're working for a trusted company like an accountant then you could then uh, your whole business is completely exposed um so it's a massive security risk um so you do need to make sure that you've um you've definitely got the setup um so second thing mm-hmm. buying lists is a real big no to buy lists mm-hmm. um, it's really cheap and it's a great way and a big cheap way and quick way of building a mailing list but like you've just said emma about the amount of times that you receive unsolicited emails or, or from companies you've not really heard of before um you know you just need to think it's like as a person if you're buying emails you're buying data where's it come from um is it really good data you don't know so really you're putting a lot of time and effort and money because email marketing generally isn't free so you have to pay for the levels of like high amounts of contacts and can be quite pricey um it's not a great way of doing that um i don't think no it's not very ethical um, the other thing is that there are spam traps, so it tends to be on these big mailing lists. You will find um, that there are like email um, addresses in there um, that kind of like are, are traps, and and then the email marketing software will be able to detect that um, and then see that your list is actually um, shouldn't have even been imported. So that can create some problems for you because if you if that happens, you could risk your domain name being blacklisted. And trying to reverse that. Sorry, there's some really noisy things going on in the background, and I, I can't control them. Um, if your domain name gets blacklisted, it's really difficult to reverse that. Um, and I've I've read of companies that I've had to kind of start all over again um, with a new domain name and, and get the brand out there. Um, so it's as bad as your Facebook account sort of being closed, really. So you definitely just really, really do be careful. Um, if you're new, it can take time to build up trust. So yeah. make sure you plan your regular content, like I say, um, but don't bombard people. Emma, you might want to put your mic on. I <laughs> Thank you. Um, but don't bombard people when you're starting out. So find out what users like and what they can click on. Spammy content, as Emma was saying. Um, so the actual links you put in the email there to make sure you're linking to good quality sites only spammy phrases um so think about it. it might sound like great slogans to use but actually the email software might pick it up um and then thinking actually this is not a very good quality email because you put this title now or you use these words you know win millions of pounds competition there's a whole list and you can use some software i'm about to call, talk about testing in a minute um but you can use kind of like testing um elements and software to pick up these spammy phrases and highlight these out to you uh, red fonts lots of exclamation marks capital letters uh, personalization really helps so that's a positive thing you can put in for content anything else like exclamation marks capitals red fonts um, it, they don't tend to like that and are we really still sending those oops emails i made a mistake i should have put this in and i didn't and i'm really sorry about this it's just another excuse to send the same email again and they probably work um, but actually, it's just I think it's just lazy marketing 
Uh, it's just it used to be funny that people made mistakes, but now it's actually more annoying. Um, testing, I've kind of I've kind of talked about um, some testing that you can do, like for spammy phrases um, and checking through your email as well, in terms of like checking for broken links. Um, always send a test copy to you or someone else to check your email. So how many times do you send out emails with no call to actions, no links or spelling mistakes? Um, so this is about kind of refinement. Um, but um, kind of definitely check, check your email provider because they may offer different types of testings like A-B testing. So you might have two versions of an email to see what lands in the email box first um, and what people respond to better. Is it with this picture or with that slogan or this slogan? So you get to understand a bit more about psychology of your readers. And the last couple here, um, cleaning. So making sure you clean your lists. So look at your email lists. I haven't done this for a little while myself, so it is on my list to do. Um, so this is why I've put it on here. Um, so look at your email accounts um, and then anybody that's regularly come up as a hard bounce you just need to get rid of them because again it's, it's dead money it's a waste of time your figures will be much better without them and mm. um, inactive emails so maybe people that aren't really engaging with your content you might want to think about removing or maybe segment those and put them try a different approach to remarket to those um but remember, it's best spending any time working with customers who are interested, like Emma was saying. So collecting emails can be like a bit of like a vanity project in social media with followers and likes. Um, it's just a metric to guide you, but it's not a road really that you should be following you know, to the end of that you've got to keep getting more and more and more. It's like look at your overall metrics. If they're all great, fine, but very often that's not the case. And the last one is just really timing. Days of the week holidays time zones do need to think about things so especially going into the summer um we've had the euro footballs we've had wimbledon um and we've got the olympics coming up um which obviously different time zones so people's behaviors will change regardless of what country that you're in so definitely sort of think about when you're sending things out local holidays custom holidays um definitely have a, a think about that so those are my top tips and then I'm going to pass over to um, Gemma, who's going to kind of um, talk to us about her side. Thanks, Darren. Um, so I just wanted to quickly cover um, some email trends that have come about. Obviously, um, since COVID, some of them have been adopted a bit quicker than they probably would have been. Um, but the first one is all around customer experience and making sure that you're putting the customer's needs first, making sure your emails are helpful, the customer focused, the personalised. And when you say personalised, it doesn't just mean like, oh, hi, Gemma, at the start, and then that's it. Um, these emails really need to be real and authentic, using dynamic content. So one of the things that's really come about I think with COVID is the use of AI and automated um, email marketing. So you can really, really tailor your emails specifically for that person. So you can put pieces of content in that are relevant for the end user. So it's, it's really, of, really of benefit to people. And I think as well, people, the people who are reading it, they haven't got that much time, but it's also been really difficult for people who are putting the emails together. So the marketers, the marketing department, so use of automated um, systems like SharpSpring, which is the one that we use, um, HubSpot, things like that. You really can plan things out and make sure that your customer, once you've put them into um, segments, once you've done the personas, that you really are giving them exactly what they want. Um, another thing is rediscovering the value of plain text emails. Um, obviously, when you're putting together HTML emails, they take a lot of time. So everybody's been really time poor at the minute. So it's a big time saving for people. And I think as well, the other thing about plain text, which I didn't really think of until I was um, looking at this in a bit more detail, people actually think that they get an um, email directly when they get a plain text email rather than something that's come as part of like a bulk email out to people or a newsletter. Um, another one is another trend would be interactive emails. So I don't know if many people use um, Google AMP. 
advanced mobile pages. But now when you're setting up your emails, you can use Google EMP and use some of the Google embed some of the Google shopping um, if you have products and services on there for sale. Um, so it's a bit more interesting. It directly links to things. People can shop directly from the email. Um, Another one is using bright colours, um, which I'm a big fan of because I'm quite into black bright colours, but making your email stand out now, um, breaking it down into blocks so people can see what's between this piece of content and that piece of content. So I think the big thing, though, that's moved on is the marketing automation. What do you guys think? I think there's some amazing things there. Um, I think this. I, I love the the fact about the um, AMP pages. Um, so I'd have to. I don't not too sure how to do that myself actually. So something um, that I'll have to definitely look into. I've got a couple of um, links that we can put in the show notes. Um, two sites that I use quite a lot. One is um, Dave Chaffee's site, Smart Insights. They've put something together on um, trends and um, marketing influencer hub which I use a lot as well. They've got some step-by-steps and things. So we'll share those in the show notes for everybody because that the Google one, the interactive emails, when I was looking at that, that was that was really good. And I think as well, when we've been doing the ones using, using SharpSpring, Darren, um, the dynamic yeah. content and stuff, it just, it gives, it gives the end user the real feeling that it is for them. It is going to help them because yes. it does address their needs, their pain points, what it is that they're looking for. You know, because you've really taken time to break down your email list into the segments. Um, you've done your personas, you've done your research, so it's really specifically for them. And I think that, you know, when you look at the dynamic content, I know that it is possible um, in Mailchimp now. Um, they've made it a lot more easier to to do that. So we, you know, we use SharpSpring uh, marketing automation, um, uh, which mentioned a couple of times. So that. Uh, that's all about that. It's very similar to HubSpot, which do the same thing. And I think both those platforms really kind of um, kick the whole kind of marketing personalization off. There are other platforms out there like Marketo um, as well, um, who have been kind of big about marketing automation. Um, but there's some really good ones I just wanted to shout out about email on Acid, uh, MailerLite and ConvertKit. There are a lot. There's Sending Blue is another one out there. Um, but I know Made a Light, I've used myself beforehand and I found that was um, a, quite easy. Um, Active Campaign is another one that I've started using with them for a client. And they all have slightly different features. They're all kind of around, based around different price points. Um, and I don't think it's one that we sh you should use over another, but I would definitely look at kind of the support options um, and look at what your goals are for email marketing. So if you're a seasoned marketer, he really wants to get more out of your marketing then you know going with kind of low priced email platform might be great for a budget but actually you should be should be pushing it up a bit more um and you should be looking at maybe some of the other platforms which you can do a lot more um with especially if you've got large volumes of data and um, to try and kind of segment that down and understand your customers a lot more because if you're just starting out as a business owner you know maybe start looking at things like MailerLite or mailchimp um which are a bit more you know, have free plans to start off with under 500 contacts and then just kind of you pay as you kind of grow, you pay as you grow um, on that one. What do you reckon, Gem? Yeah, I mean, the other good thing that I was going to mention uh, about that Google um, accelerated mobile pages, I think I said advanced enough, but it's not it's accelerated mobile pages. Um, you don't have, you're not having to set up a landing page. So when you put these products, um, from your online shop from Google they go straight into the email so people are buying directly from that they're not then clicking a link in the email to take them to a landing page to then have to buy the product or service from that landing page it's all in that email that sounds absolutely fabulous Emma are you still with us we're doing voice recording so I can't see if you're still around she's here <laughs> so I can see the mic come off yeah I'm here no, it is good. I think it's really worth um, small businesses uh, getting to grips with this and don't be intimidated. Things like 
um, MailChimp and all those big uh, platforms also deal with a lot of your GDPR side of things and, and that kind of things so that as a, a small business owner you're worried about. Um, just be transparent with people about how to subscribe and unsubscribe. And um, I think it's just a, a good, clear way to connect with your customer and your audience. Well, that's fantastic. So um, thank you so much to both of you. And I really hope everybody's listening has, has been able to pick up a few tips there. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that we've missed, um, please let us know. Um, all the details mm -hmm. will be in the show notes. Uh, we'll be back with a new podcast in a fortnight's time. We're going to be talking about procrastination and how to beat it. Um, until <laughs> then, keep well. Bye-bye. Send us feedback. Send us feedback. <laughs>